Hello, my name is Mr. Clark and welcome to uh, our virtual open house for the 21-22 school year. Uh, bienvenidos, welcome. We are so excited to have all of our students, uh, staff, some new staff, uh, some new students uh, on our campus for this school year. And um, I am highly confident that we will continue um, to be an awesome uh, learning environment for our students and staff. Uh, hopefully you had an awesome summer. You got an opportunity to sharpen your saw, uh, spend some time with families and loved ones and friends in a safe uh, manner. Uh, got an opportunity to read some, right? We don't want you just on your iPad or your iPhone and, and standing in front of a, a video game uh, machine all summer. Hopefully you had a balanced uh, summer and, and got out and had some fun and unplugged. So um, thank you for choosing Rowlett Middle, um, both new students, um, but also returning students. We don't take that lightly. Um, you individually, all of you is what helps contribute to our awesome culture. And uh, you all add value to our learning environment at Rowlett Middle. We showcase the talents of all of our students and our kids have many of them. We are so excited about being able to exhibit some of those talents that our kids have. We'll have performances this year. Uh, our goal is to have field trips, um, all of the above. Um, but like last year, um, we're gonna have to make sure we are monitoring the guidance from our local health department, our state, and um, all medical professionals on, on how we can ensure that we maintain a safe learning environment for our students and staff. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jamar Clark. Um, uh, my family is from uh, Palmetto originally, um, but uh, uh, as a young family, both my parents uh, went into the military. My dad went to the military at 17, and uh, you know that's you know where we started traveling the world. Uh, so uh, I lived in lived in a lot of different places. I lived in Spain um, twice, once when I was a baby and once when I was a little little older, um, lived in California, lived in Missouri, lived in Texas. I've lived in so many places. And when my dad retired from the Air Force, we moved back down here. And I went to Southeast High School in 10th grade. Um, graduated from Southeast High School. I was a, a student athlete. I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to college uh, to play football and I ran track and, uh, in college. And I uh, graduated from Georgia Tech uh, with a, uh, a BS in uh, business management. Um, Fast forward a few years, I got into education. I, I, uh, I uh, after a, uh, a very, very short uh, professional football career, I uh, came back home and got into the family business of education. I'm from a family of educators. My uh, big sister is a school guidance counselor and my big brother is the executive director of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of secondary schools uh, in Manatee County. Um, so it's kind of like my boss, which I'm, I'm not very happy about, um, but that's a, a whole nother video. So I uh, wanted to share with you a little bit about me. Um, I'm so excited to, to be the principal of this school. I can literally walk to where I uh, went to high school. So this is my community. Um, and uh, I, I am so fortunate to be able to uh, lead uh, this awesome school that I think makes our community better. And individually, you guys make our school better, which therefore makes our community better. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna be sharing with you a, a short PowerPoint. Uh, that will go over some important topics for the school year. Uh, and, um, you know, if there are any questions after the PowerPoint, feel free to contact me. I have an open door policy. I tell kids, even when my door is closed, I'm here for you. Our, our front office staff uh, will, will take a note, uh, take the information, and make sure that uh, I get your questions answered. And that's not only for our, our students and staff, but for our families as well. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into this PowerPoint. So um, today, uh, we not only have our virtual open house where the videos from uh, important areas across campus are, are able to be viewed on YouTube, but today also is the day that we have Parent University on campus. So at Parent University, parents had the opportunity to come on campus, students could get their schedule, find uh, their, their classes, and also visit different vendors on campus from from uh, uniform to transportation to clinic, all of that information. So uh, we did both of these things on, on the same day. We know, um, you know each family has different needs. So we really wanted to make sure we created a, uh, an on-demand virtual open house. So if you weren't able to come today, you were still able to see those welcoming videos from your 
your student leaders classroom or different areas on campus so you could um, feel as though um, you 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 uh, heard all the information and you can actually go back and if you're anything like me take notes on on the information provided um, so this year we are asking our students and staff to be the leader uh, last year our theme was be the change um, there was such a uh, uh, transformational summer last year. So many things going on. We asked students to be the change that they wanted to see. Um, uh, uh, Gandhi quote that I love, uh, because change starts from within, right? Seven Habits tells us you change from the inside out. Um, this year, we are asking students and staff to be the leader that they want to see. I feel like leadership is an important topic in our, in our school, in our uh, county, in our state, in our country. And we want our students to lead by example. We want our students to be the leader, not to wait on someone else to lead. If individually, we all, and I say we, because I'm a part of this, if we all um, take the lead and be proactive and be the leader in our classes, on campus, at home, in your communities, that's how collectively we're able to continue to be this special learning environment that so many people want to be at. So, and to do that, we have to have um, um, the, the values right we have to have the principles um that align with our school mission and and the things that we're doing on campus uh to make sure that we're heading in the right direction so we want to be rooted in good character and you'll see the image there um that image you'll you'll see on t-shirts on our kids that'll be able to wear on spirit day on friday our staff will will uh, have those shirts as well because we want um we want students and staff to, to understand how important it is to be rooted in good character. Um, and by using the seven habits, those are the timeless principles that, um, that we know align with being a highly effective person. And that's why as a school, school community, we follow the seven habits of highly effective people because we know um, that those time-tested principles um, will pr produce fruit, right? They'll bear fruit. If we continue to be rooted in good character, and if, we, uh, and if we follow seven habits, we'll continue to bear fruit. And I think that's why our schools, Rowlett Academy and Rowlett Middle, continue to be successful because we're rooted in the seven habits, okay? So be the leader, RMA. Our mission at Rowlett Middle is to provide a high quality educational experience that will foster a love of learning. We want our students to love school. We want our staff to love coming to work. Uh, so that is part of the 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 um the culture that we have that's why we want to make sure we're infusing the arts we want to make sure we have engaging lessons um, that students will be able to to love and the arts is such a great way to do that uh, the arts create uh or promote creativity um uh, so that's why uh, we ask our teachers and our students to be creative and uh, we ask our teachers to be creative and teach creative kids retain knowledge more so when they are engaged and they feel like they can um uh they can you know be creative within their lessons. Um, and we're, we even did training this summer on how to be more creative in class, how to infuse the arts, uh, and how to infuse more STEAM learning on, on campus. And lastly, excellence in academics. We want to continue to raise the bar and provide a rigorous learning environment with our students while balancing um, you know, fairness and understanding uh, in a safe learning environment on campus. OK, and lastly, we want to create 21st century learners. I think at Rowlett Middle, we are at the forefront of that. Um, and I think that's what helped us be successful uh, during such a transformational year last year. The goals for this school year, uh, you know, the more that things change, the more that Rowlett Middle stays the same. These are uh, very similar goals that we had when we opened five years ago, when I opened the school with uh, 300 students and about 15 staff members. So we're asking um, uh, our our students and our staff um, to, to really continue to, to grow each day and inch by inch, we will meet all these goals. So seven habits and raving fans culture. We are seven habits school. You'll see that not only in iLead, which we have every day, but you know, we live the habits on our campus. And uh, raving fans culture. We wanna make sure we provide awesome customer service for our, our students and our, our families so much so that they're gonna tell so many people about how awesome our culture is. And that's why we continue to grow by word of mouth, um, by infusing that raving fans culture. Academic excellence. We just wanna to continue to meet our kids where they are. We wanna to continue to differentiate instruction and uh, make sure we're raising the bar academically for all of our students. All right, 
um, full steam ahead. Uh, we just want to make sure we are, you know, creating a 21st century learning environment. And that A in STEAM represents the arts. And we feel like the arts are the, the glue, the creativity that holds STEAM together. And uh, we're full steam ahead this year. And we're going to be implementing STEAM activities across campus this year. Effective communication. We learned through the pandemic that it is essential, it's paramount for us to have effective communication, not only on campus, but with our families as well. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit and continuous improvement. You heard me refer to it earlier. Uh, you know, We are talking about Kaizen, which is a Japanese phrase for good change, getting a little bit better every day, everybody, everywhere, every time, making sure that we are being consistent with our systems, with our communication, and with the things that make us um, a successful campus. So we talk a lot about continuous improvement, our staff, but our students, uh, and uh, most importantly, me. I want to get better uh, as a as a as an educator and as a leader every day. All right. So those are our school goals this year. Some updates for this year. Uh, this year we're going to have I lead every day. It is so essential that we start the day um, with the seven habits, talking about organization, giving kids an opportunity to, to uh, do some study hall. Um, there's a lot of things that we're going to be talking about in I lead, and it is almost like our homeroom class and we're able to pour so many of the not only academic but social emotional components into I lead. so kids will get that every day now. Block scheduling last year we transitioned to block scheduling because it afforded us the opportunity to have more time in class, the ability to dig deeper um, with our instruction and also uh, implement, you know, uh, uh, more STEAM learning, um, be able to differentiate learning more so, and things of that nature. So we did some training, some professional development over the summer to ensure that we are using time effectively uh, in those block schedules and making sure that we are differentiating learning and being able to meet all of our kids' needs. So we're very excited about, about block scheduling and how that would improve academics and social emotional learning uh, for us. Uh, executive functioning skills, essentially executive functioning is just uh, how to give students the tools to be able to get things done uh, more efficiently. And all of our kids need that. We found that out last year. So we're going to be providing um, these strategies for all kids on how to improve with their exec executive functioning. Uh, enrichments, we're, we'll be bringing enrichments back. Enrichments are those after school activities that give kids an opportunity to try new things, to have some fun, and uh, to uh, maybe, um, you know, uh, continue to um, continue to experience some of the arts classes that they have on campus. Uh, Centegics is a new safety alert system that, we, um, that we're implementing. New state statute, Alyssa's law, um, mandates that now our uh, alert system needs to communicate directly uh, with law enforcement in the case of an emergency. So we updated our system. We uh, have the same system as the Manatee County School District, so we're excited about that. Uh, and also sports and field trips will be back uh, this year, and um, we're very excited about that because we know our kids need those opportunities um, uh, so they can grow outside of the classroom as well. School expectations. We, uh, we have RMA OWL's expectation, which is an acronym for observing safety rules, working hard and smart, leading by example, and showing respect. Um, the, this is a consistency across our campus. You'll see this poster in every class around campus in the important areas. We want our students to know what the expectations are every area of class, inside of class, outside of class as well. Uh, also, expectation of the, uh, the parent-student contract. Um, you know, we know how important contracts are, so we ask our students and our, our kids to sign a contract saying that you agree to all of these expectations and that you will, will follow them. And we thank you in advance for having this conversation with your child and making sure you are reinforcing our expectations um, on campus. That's what makes us a special, a special place. We are a choice school. Um, one thing I love about our school is every staff member wants to be here, right? Every staff member wants to be here. Every student made an effort to be here. You don't go here just because you live in the neighborhood. Um, so that's what makes us special. And by, the, by holding our kids and our families accountable, um, we can make sure we maintain this awesome culture. Technology, we are a 21st century campus. Um, you know, I went to Georgia Tech. I love technology. One thing I learned last year is technology is the only thing that our students need to be successful. So we'll have a blended learning environment this year, not only technology, but old school paper and pencil, um, you know, 
that is a balanced learning environment and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have more of a blended learning environment this school year. So we're one-to-one -one technology. Last year, um, we started, we worked hard to make sure we can get every student an iPad and you have the opportunity to take that iPad home. Uh, so that is uh, something that is essential during COVID as all, all of you know. I'm glad that we were proactive and, and got that done. Um, so now it's embedded into our environment and our students are very comfortable with it. We will, the first two weeks of school, walk students, walk students through those expectations with their technology, how to use it, and, um, and that'll be done through their classroom. This year, uh, no wireless headphones, all right? So no AirPods or, or wireless beats, things of that nature, only wired headphones. So that's a new update, okay? Thank you families for helping us facilitate that. Uh, Google Classroom. The blended learning I talked about, but Google Classroom is a tool that really helps us to be able to maintain consistency. Um, all assignments, all classroom uh, instruction, uh, things of that nature will be posted on Google Classroom. So students, whether they're on campus or off campus, will be able to go to Google Classroom and what, whether it's to see the instructional video uh, from that week or be able to see what assignments have been given by that teacher. All right. Uh, tech contracts. Um, we're asking parents and students to sign their tech contract, um, pretty much agreeing to making sure that you are uh, 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 following our, our expectations of technology. There is an insurance fee that we ask all parents to pay annually. Uh, with that insurance fee, um, it, will, it will go towards paying for any cracks or damages to your iPad or you know, uh, any of the other things that we end up providing to the student okay so that insurance fee is paid uh, we'd like it paid by um, september 1st scholarships are available and i repeat scholarships are available please just contact uh, contact us and um, we'll work with you okay and miss kelly uh, our bookkeeper uh, is great great about that we're here to support all of our families scholarships are available please uh, contact us if you need support and we ask that students with your technology when you get on campus at 8.15, uh, we want technology, your personal technology off and away, all right? And we want that personal technology off and away until 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., if you wanna text mom or grandma, let them know that, you know, ask them where they are so they can be in the car loop, we allow for that. But we're asking parents to support those conversations with your students about technology being off from 8.15 to three o'clock, all right? If students are abusing that, we will confiscate phones and we'll ask students to come pick them up after school or if it's uh happens too many times there will be infractions and parents will have to pick up phones from home i'm sorry from school uh, if you have any questions please let me know rma culture you know this is something that's so special um our culture on campus and uh i venture to say that parent involvement is the secret ingredient to our success right our parents the reason why you're here is because you're an involved parent and you you really are cognizant about what you want um, from your child's education. So we greatly appreciate that. And that is really what makes us special. Uh, your parent involvement in your child's education, their academics, and um, together as a team, we're able to continue to main maintain this culture. So we want you to be more involved. We're looking to have more parents come in and, and join our, our, our RFA, um, join committees, um, find different ways to be supportive on campus. I know. Uh, support at the middle school level is different from the elementary school, but there are creative ways that we can have parents still provide support on campus um, or from home, even during COVID. All right. Uh, we allow parents to visit for lunch. That's something that, you know, really is different at middle school. A lot of the, a lot of the students don't want their families coming to lunch, maybe at other middle schools I've been to, where here it's the opposite, uh, especially when you bring food. Uh, so uh, we are allowing parents to visit for lunch, but due to COVID, we're gonna ask that you not invite any friends, okay? So until further notice, you can come for lunch, um, but no inviting of friends, okay? And we have a two week period to where we won't allow lunch with friends, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we won't allow parents to come for lunch, but we'll notify you when, when, when uh, you're able to come on campus, we're saying two weeks, all right? Family atmosphere, we are a family as a campus, but that is extended to your family as well. So um, that small learning environment, family uh, environment is really what, uh, what we love and is that, you know, um, uh, that energy that we love on our campus. And what it, it makes, it helps our kids feel safe. 
and feel valued. Um, so we love that family atmosphere and thank you for contributing to that. And we are a whole child learning environment. We know when students feel safe, when they feel engaged, when they feel challenged, when they feel supported, they do better, not only in school, but social emotionally, and that it really is the essence of, uh, of uh, who we are and what we do in the classroom and outside of the classroom. COVID-19 protocols, um, I, I, I will say that, you know, uh, guidance is, is changing. I promise you, just like last year, I will um, make sure that as new information, as new guidance, as new policies come out, that we are communicating effectively with all of our families. Um, so these protocols are at this point, and if changes take place, then we'll make sure that we notify you of those. So masks are strongly recommended uh, on campus, but not required. Um, we ask students and staff that if you're not feeling well, stay home. All right, we're gonna work with you. You'll be able to look at Google Classroom to get your assignments. Uh, look at instructional videos to be able to do your assignments. Um, so stay home if you're, if you're not feeling well, and we'll work with you in regards to uh, in, instruction, okay? Um, that will help us. That's the, the biggest thing to help us make sure that we may remain a safe environment. Um, we're going to continue to wash our hands. We're going to promote that on campus. Um, we want to minimize handshaking and fist bumps, not touching our eyes, things like that. All right, and also masks, face shields, and desk shields will be available upon request um, for students on campus, and we'll have masks available in areas all across campus for visitors or anybody that needs them. We're gonna limit the sharing of items. Um, we're gonna limit students coming through the clinic area. We're gonna reserve the clinic for um, you know, major emergencies, uh, and we'll have isolation areas in different places, whether it's the clinic or potentially the, the uh, cafeteria uh, in certain cases. We're going to track absenteeism. Um, we're going to make sure that we're staggering dismissal to make sure that we don't have too many students out in the hallways at one time. Seating charts were essential last year. We asked every teacher to have a seating chart. On the bus, we asked for a seating chart. So when it comes to contact tracing, we know where a child is sitting and who was sitting next to them and how far apart. That's how we are able to administer contact tracing. And we're going to ask parents uh, to sign a COVID-19 contract, just agreeing that you'll abide by our COVID-19 protocols so you can, so we all can uh, synergize to ensure that um, we maintain a safe environment for all of our children. Okay, more info, information to come regarding COVID nineteen, and as things change, um, we will, you know, communicate with you. That's why we need you to have blooms. We need you to check our our website um, because communication is essential with this important, these important updates. Um, Zoom will still be. Uh, you know, something that we're using last year. That's one of those things that we used last year for instruction. We will not use it for instruction this year, but it will be used for parent conferences, for meetings, things of that nature. So uh, we still will use Zoom. Google Voice is a tool that some of our teachers were using this year, last year. This year, we have Google Voice for all staff and it's aligned to their, um, to their, their work email. So uh, we'll be able to communicate with you via Google Voice um for students or or parents and i think that'll be able to improve communication and good news postcards these postcards are a way for us to share positive news about your children um and get in the mail we love it because it's great refrigerator uh content and it's a great for, way for us to communicate with you and and uh and you know we love sharing the positive things about our kids our kids are so awesome um you know they're so talented we showcase the talents of all of our students at RMA, and uh, that's what makes us special. Any student that is on our campus, they can find an area where um, they're able to showcase their talents. And we have so many electives, so many awesome elective teachers. Our core content teachers are, are ready um, for, for students to come back and, and to, to, to get to learning. Uh, and our, our other support staff, you know, we, got, we thank them so much because uh, they also are contributing uh, to this awesome environment that we call Rowlett Middle. So uh, thank you for listening. Listening. More information to come. Please make sure you're looking at the other uh, welcome videos from our, our staff. Uh, I thank our staff for all the hard work that you've done uh, throughout the summer, preparing for students to come back through professional development and also from uh, last week, getting your classrooms ready, collaborating, um, with your teams, with your departments, all in an effort to make sure that 21-22 is going to be uh, a more awesome year than last year, because we're a continuous improvement environment, and every year 
we want to get an inch better just like every day in the classroom. So thank you for watching my video. Um, remember, leadership is doing the right thing, even when nobody's watching, and we'll see you around campus. Thank you.